Chapter 4. Save the World Belaha pulled the stone from a hidden pouch and laid it in front of them, giving Rory a piercing glare. You left this where we landed. Let me make an important point about this stone. Life or death important. When you are traveling, this stone is your one and only ticket home. Without it, I can't get you back. Billy said, I thought you told us we weren't traveling with our bodies. Balaka picked up a small rock and threw it at Billy so fast he didn't have time to duck. Hit him right between the eyes. Ow, that hurt. How can it hurt if you don't have a body? Billy rubbed his head and glared at Balaka. I don't know. You're the one with the answers. Then pay attention. What travels is the energy of your form. That is the most important part of your body. You just aren't carrying around the bag of meat. That sitting back in your kiva. Tima looked thoughtful. What happens if someone sees us back there? It won't happen. Hiding a place from unaware people is pretty easy, and I did it before we left. However, the energy form has limitations. It can't carry something physical from here to your time and place. You need your physical bodies for that, and to defeat the Krolodutes, you have to bring something from this kiva back to your time. I'm not telling you what it is yet. So, how do we travel with our bodies? asked Rory. You have to activate the stone. Once you activate the stone, it becomes a portal, and you can travel to any time, place, or dimension with your physical body. Until then, it keeps your energy form stable, especially when you're traveling, especially now when all this is new to you. That is why you have to pay attention to the stone. If you lose it before you learn a lot more, you are stuck. You can't get it back, you can't get back, even with my help. Keep track of the stone. Very important. Got it, said Rory. Billy asked, If this kiva is at Rattlesnake Ranch, and what we need is in it, why can't we just dig for it in our time? Think back to the times you've been here before. Did you see the kiva or any sign of it? No, of course not. There's the old falling down Rattlesnake Ranch building, and most of the ground is covered with old asphalt. I guess it was the parking lot. Belaka continued, so how deep do you think we are now? James spoke up. Based on the time it took to climb down, I'd say we're 12 to 15 feet down. Belaka nodded again. Add to that several feet of dirt that has covered it in the past 5,000 years, and you'd have quite a bit of digging to do. Think you can do that in your time without anyone noticing and asking what you're doing? Rory agreed. That's right, and if we start finding things, there'll be archaeologists all over the site in a flash. We couldn't take anything. James said, I guess you're right. Besides, I'm guessing that Cisco, the guy who bought the place, wouldn't let us dig a big hole just because we asked. Exactly. You need to activate the stone so it becomes a portal, so you can travel here and bring back the key. That is your task. How do we do that? asked Tima. To activate the stone, you must survive four challenges. I can take you, but I cannot help. You four must get through them on your own, or die trying. By facing each challenge, you'll learn something required to activate one of the corners. Four corners, four challenges. Got it? Billy asked, well, what's in it for us? This sounds dangerous. Why should we risk it for a bunch of glowing threads? The Krolodutes know you're here. That's why the first one was looking. I got that one, but there'll be plenty more, and they are all looking for you. You four stand out, so it won't take long. They'll be coming for you. If you fail or do nothing, the Krolodutes will kill you. They will never leave you alone until they rip you apart. Then they'll turn to everyone else in your world. Succeed and you save the world. Fail and you die. Is that a good enough reason? What if we just refuse to play, asked James. Won't matter. You'll find out why on one of the challenges, but the Krolodutes won't ask if you want to fight. They will attack, and if you stand there, that's fine with them. It'll make it faster and easier to destroy you. James looked sick. He didn't like the options, but he couldn't see a way out. Belaha stood up. You need to see what you'll be facing. One more trip, then I'll take you home. They looked at James. He took a deep breath and then nodded. I'm ready. Put your hands on the stone, ordered Belaha. Hold on. This'll be fast, and we won't land like we did here. 
I'm not sure what may be there to greet us, so we're going to stop at a holding point. What's that? asked Rory. Think of it as an observation platform. When we get there, keep your eyes open and your mouth shut. He looked at Billy. I mean it. One noise at the wrong time, and you may not make it back. Billy nodded his understanding. Again, the roaring filled their ears. The shimmering energy cloud filled the kiva, and Balakha faded into a ball of light. He rose and hovered over the stone. Following a thread that glowed more than the others, they were quickly pulled into the web. Soon they were flashing along the thread that broadened into a ribbon of glowing light. Looking around, Rory saw the glowing spheres floating beyond the ribbons, but now he saw that countless threads and ribbons started at each sphere. The spheres seemed to be wrapped in them. The speed, the glow, the rush of energy from all around was a wonderful feeling. Rory's mouth stretched into a wide grin. This rocks! I was born to ride these ribbons. Hold on, called Belaha. Remember, no talking. Belaha looked down, checking where they were, nodded and said, okay. They felt the dropping sen sensation, then a sudden stop. Looking around, Rory saw they were just in, outside a big shopping center in Albuquerque. But the angle was wrong. They were looking at the scene from above, like they were in a tall building, but they weren't standing on anything. Belaha spoke so quietly, it seemed uh, a rustle of leaves. He gestured to the mall, uh, toward the mall. Look at the people. Look for the threads. Relax your eyes. Do not focus on what you expect to see. Allow your mind to see what is there. Rory looked at the people, but instead of focusing and giving each a label, there's a fat guy or cool shoes, he tried to open his eyes and shut his mind's mouth. As he did, he began to see a cloud around the group he was looking at. At first, his mind tried to explain, and it went away. He tried again, looking and not explaining. Slowly, the threads began to fade into view. Some of the people had threads of energy extending up from them, but they were not the bright threads he saw coming from his hands and body. Dark blobs hovered around many people. The blobs seemed to be stuck onto the threads. Suddenly, the picture came into focus. The blobs were creatures like the one that had attacked him, and they were sucking on the people's threads. There were also blobs floating around freely, looking for an open thread to grab. Some of the blobs had settled completely around a person, oozing all over them like, like enormous leeches. Those people had either very dim threads or no threads at all. Rory could tell the blobs were sucking out the energy, the thread's energy. It was, it was a horrible thing to see. Someone being eaten slowly, alive, before his eyes. Tima whispered urgently, Stop them! We have to stop them! Belaha made a cutting motion with his hand. I told you, quiet! Look how, look how many there are! You can't stand against one, and this is an entire nest. We better get out of here! I knew it was bad, but didn't know it was this bad. There are too many, and, and they've eaten most of the light. And they've eaten most of the light here. We're going to stand out like a sun in a dark room. They'll be sure to sense us as a new source of food, and then we'll be suddenly... A huge shape loomed in front of them, blocking their view. A smell of rotten meat, burning plastic, and sweat made Rory dizzy. It was filled with a terrible sadness mixed with a bone-chilling fear. It was like when the thing attacked him last night, but worse. He, he opened his mouth to scream, but couldn't do anything except gasp in panic. A screeching, grinding noise roared into Rory's brain. The thing was laughing, forcing himself to look at a black, bubbling creature he saw red glowing orbs for eyes and a hooked cruel beak over a darker patch that opened wider and spoke. Ah, the thing rasped. How good to see you after so long. I have been looking forward to tasting you for an eternity. Belaha stepped between the thing and the four, growing and expanding, taking on an enormous bright form that pulsed with power. His voice rolled forth, making the very air sh shake. Ralam, you are as foul as ever, but looking a little worse for wear. Food getting a little thin, your friends start to eat each other yet? 
Brattle arm barked its hideous laugh. Plenty to eat. Plenty of puppets to play with, too. But I've been thinking about looking around for some new feeding grounds. Now that I know you are in the area, well, I think it's time to gather some of the others and a hunting we will go. Rory noticed that more of the blobs, smaller than Rattle arm, but just as menacing, were gathering behind the shapeless black thing. The red orbs looked past Belaha at the four friends. Oh, look! <laughs> You've brought me a snack! It seemed to sniff the air, then suddenly roared, Not just snacks! They have a stone! They also throw! <laughs> Attempting to clean the stain one last time? You will fail as you always have before. Fool! You seal your fate and theirs as well. It ends now. The thing hurled itself at them as the masses behind rose to attack as well. Belaha threw his arms wide, shouting, El Ataha at Al Elha Asta! His entire form blazed with a burning bright light that shot outward and up to the sky. Threads shot from all over his glowing being, blazing light and color. With a scream, the Krolodutes fell back, several burning and bubbling. Belaha turned and wrapped himself around the four and said, Time to go. Hold tight. With that, they left, leapt up a glowing ribbon and rocketed along the path. Rory looked back, but there was no sign of the mall, the scene they had just witnessed, or, he was very glad, any of the blobs. Soon Belaha said, We're back. Hold on. They dropped and landed with a thump back in the hole, back in their time. Stunned, they looked at each other, then at Belaha, who had returned to his usual form. At once, they started to bombard him with questions. He held up his hand for silence. When he spoke, he spoke haltingly. Look, Bambinos, I, I knew Rattalon was in the area, but I didn't know he was this close. I didn't know he had an entire nest. This is worse, much worse than I thought. Billy was vibrating with anger. They were killing those people, and they wanted to kill us. Belaha looked at Billy. Now you see what, what they are, and what they do when they feed. He looked at the four. That is what you are facing. It isn't pretty. But if you do nothing, you and everyone you know are going to be Krolodut's Krul food within the month. Tima said, what can we do? We don't know how to... Belaha broke in. I can't talk anymore. I have to get back to my kiva. That little trick back there took more energy than I've had to use in a couple of thousand years. You're safe for now. Here's the deal. If you want to try and save yourself and everyone else, you have to complete the four challenges. It's the only way. One challenge a week for four weeks. Tonight's the full turning moon. Next full moon is the whale moon. It'll be over by then, one way or the other. James said, there's no way we can fight those things. I mean, I'm not a wimp, but I can't do anything against something like that. Belaha replied, it's possible. It's not easy or certain. I wish you had more time or I could give you more hope. But that's not happening. You are all between a rock and a hard place. So why don't you give it a shot? One challenge. You can, you make it through alive and you're on your way. You don't. You got no more worries. If you don't at least try, the world is toast within the month, and you'll be ripped apart sooner than that. Billy spoke up, still mad. I'm in. I don't like anything that thinks I'm a snack. I want to know enough to kick that rattle on his butt. Tima looked at Billy. I'm with you. That was the worst thing I've ever felt. If they're coming for us, I'd rather have a shot at doing something about it. Rory nodded. Things like that don't, don't just go away. He turned to James. I know this isn't your kind of thing, but the four of us have to do this together, and for some reason, you're one of the four. We can't do this without you. He looked at Belaha. That's right, isn't it? Belaha nodded. Four or nothing. Four corners. Four challenges. Only you four will work. Rory looked back at James. One try, please. Just the first one. Then, if you want out after that, any time, none of us will stop you. Roy looked at the others. Agreed? Agreed, said Tima and Billy. James tried to find a hole in Rory's logic, but couldn't. Finally, he sighed and nodded. All right. One shot. 
then I stay in or go, but it's my decision. And none of you stops talking to me or anything. Deal? They all nodded. Then they turned to Belaha. Bent, looking very old and tired, he attempted a grin. Good. Be back here next Sunday at 11.11, time of the half moon, and we'll take a trip. For now, I've got some healing to do. He started to fade into the shimmering ball of smoke. Then his face reformed and stared at Rory. Tachta, you got the stone? Rory held it up. You bet. I'm never letting loose of this. When Radalam opens wide for a bite, I want it right here. Belaha grinned. Good for you. Good for him. You'd probably give him the farts. With that, Belaha faded once more into the ball of smoke and was gone. That's the end of chapter four.